Welcome to this tutorial about Distance Grab. I'm Gabe. You may ask yourself, wait, Distance Grab? Unity already has Distance Grab. You can do it with the... 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 Like, the you can do it with the Raycaster Interactor. And uh, you are right, but I found myself in a bit of a pickle with some situations. For example, in this game I'm making, you have to throw the gun to just retrieve it, and the, the Raycaster doesn't quite cut it. Um, I had something slightly different in mind. Is it possible to learn this power? You'll be happy to know that it's not just possible, but also quite simple to do. And at the end of this tutorial, you're gonna end up in a situation like this, when you can just point in the general direction of the cube and grab it from any distance and any position. Before we start with the coding though, we're gonna have to do some setup. We're gonna have to install the XR plugin management and select an SDK from the project settings, and then we're gonna convert the camera into an XR rig. Here I am testing it just out to see that everything is up and running. After that, we're gonna have to go into the package manager and install from the preview packages the XR interaction toolkit. This is essential for us because it gives us access to the controllers and the grabbables that we're gonna be using in this tutorial. We're then gonna create an NT C -sharp file and we're gonna call it distance grab. Before we actually jump into the coding side of things, let's set up the scene a little bit more. So let's create a cube and let's just place it somewhere in the scene. We're then gonna create a material to identify it. I'm gonna go with red. And we're gonna create a new material for our cursor. The cursor is an object that we're gonna spawn on top of the grabbable objects to signify that they are, well, in fact, grabbable. I'm gonna make it blue and transparent. And finally, I'm gonna create the actual cursor as a sphere. Remember to remove the sphere collider because that's gonna create issues if you don't. We're gonna apply the material and drag it down as a prefab after giving the name cursor to it. Fantastic! We're now able to jump into the coding proper. So let's open up the distance grabbable interactor script and start writing some code. First thing to do is to include the XR interaction toolkit for our class and then we're gonna inherit from XR base controller interactor. Then we're gonna create a list of interactables as our varied targets, and we're gonna select our current nearest object. These are private variables that are needed by the base controller interactor. In our settings, we're gonna set up a grabbing threshold, a public cursor, and a public forward vector. These are gonna be used when we're actually gonna select things. And we're gonna go and have a private list of grabbable items and a sphere collider that we'll need to actually go and collide virtually with the object that we want to grab. So here in start, we're gonna add our sphere collider and set it up to be a trigger and very small as well. Then we're gonna instantiate the cursor and set it as inactive so it disappears immediately. We're gonna make it appear on top of the game objects later on when we're actually dealing with that. Finally, for start, we're gonna create a list of all the objects that we could grab. So we're gonna be using the find objects of type for all the interactables, and we're gonna set that to be a list. This is a specific function that is included in the package uh, link, system.link, so we're gonna have to include that. I'm doing it automatically here, but you can also do it by hand. Next, we're gonna override another very important method called valid targets that will return our list of valid targets to the XR interaction manager. Then in process interactor, we're gonna invoke the base function for it, and then we're gonna call get valid targets, passing our own list of valid targets that we are given from the interaction manager. We are now getting into the proper of our function. So first of all, we clear the list, so we have nothing to begin with. Then we're gonna go and uh, set up a min algorithm. So this algorithm is gonna go through a series of objects and then it's gonna decide which one is the most likely to get got by our grabbing hands. And to do that, we're gonna be using a super useful method, the dot product. So here it is, a small visualization of the dot product. Uh, it answers the question, how alike are these two vectors, right? So let's get into that. We're gonna go and uh, go through all of the interactables of the grabbables, let's see, that we found earlier on. And then we're gonna go and compare the dot products between the pointing vector that we have in our hand 
and how that is similar to the vector that goes from the pointy hand to the object. And if they overlap over a certain threshold, well, we say that that's a good candidate, that's a good guess. And if it's the best guess at the end of this loop, we just select that. And if we have a selectable object in here, we are gonna set the cursor to be active and we put it on top of the object. If not, we just set it to be inactive. Finally, the last method that we have to implement that is called from the XR interaction manager is the can select method, in which we say pretty much if we have a selectable object and it's equal to the interactable we get, that we get passed from the X interaction manager, from the XR interaction manager, then we say yes, absolutely, we have something that we can select. And that's pretty much done for our script. So let's go into the final setup and then we're gonna have a demo. The final setup is pretty simple. We're just gonna create a couple of empty game objects and we're calling it left hand and right hand. And as a child to those game objects, we're gonna create a little sphere. This little sphere is gonna be our hand. So make sure to remove the sphere collider from it or there's gonna be a bit of an issue. We're gonna make them red and then I'm gonna be dragging all the stuff in. First of all, the distance grabber and then I'm gonna set up the forward vector and the cursor for each of them. And make sure you remember to set up the left and right hand for each controller. And that's it, we're done. We're now able to go in VR and just point in the general direction of a cube, grab it, throw it around and just have fun with it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe or to hit the like button. Or if you didn't enjoy it, well, I mean, at least comment and tell me why so I can improve next time or maybe not, who knows. And uh, thank you for watching and enjoy programming.